artificial intelligence, what you guys, well, what we think. These are our opinions and a little bit about, you know, the nervousness of integrating new technology because anytime something is new, as a human family, as human beings, society, there tends to be a lot of fear around it and fear can create chaos. So we just want to have this dialogue. So Tegan, what are your thoughts about AI? And, you know, let's go on the brighter side of things. So just to direct um, the information in this video, let's first kind of talk about the happy, exciting elements of artificial intelligence. I know we're using a lot it a lot in our business now, so we're seeing some really positive aspects to it, but yeah, let's roll right into it. Yeah, so kind of taking a look at AI, and as Barb was saying, uh, we do use it in-house here pretty much every day of our lives, so definitely a lot of the biggest aspects, positive points are just the utilization of organization and then getting things done faster. So we use AI for all of our video editing, we use AI for AI generative art, we use it for organization tools, we use it to build all of our videos, um, diagrams, hashtags, anything that you can really think of. And essentially what that does is gives us more time to create videos like these, um, not having to spend hours and hours and hours editing. So that's a really huge, probably the biggest factor um, to AI and how it's changing our lives. And then also, like I was saying, the organizational skills. So it creates those daily uh, charts and daily things for you to do. Uh, and a really easy, like, that's the nice thing about AI is it's really user-friendly for someone who's used it a bit. Maybe somebody who hasn't used it at all. Um, it keeps it really user-friendly for people. So if I have to go and teach somebody how to use it or vice versa, it's not saying, okay, we have to go through weeks and weeks. It's literally maybe an hour or two course kind of going over it. And then it's, yeah, it's just clicking buttons. So. It is. And from the standpoint of being a business owner, just the, uh, the way that I can utilize AI and have all of my multiple departments really pull some amazing uh, content writing, um, things that would take a long time, you know, how to generate rate hashtags for certain videos. Uh, we are obviously a college so there's so much curriculum there's so much learning and dialogue that has to go into it now um, we will be making a video about some of the negatives of it okay that you know some of the, the downfalls of um, it in a practical sense and then we'll we'll make a further video about sort of some of the um, apocalyptic type ideologies that kind of flow through yes. through the brain because I, I, I want to address this there's a lot of it on YouTube and the internet right now so I always like to be massively positive and spin it in a way that, again, keeps our mental health on a certain equilibrium so that we are also enjoying our day and not getting sucked down a rabbit hole. But we've certainly seen it um, really increase the, uh, the speed at which we can put out content and the speed at which we can create great content for our social media, essentially. 100%. And then, yeah, kind of relating to that is, you know, not having to spend vigorous amounts of time focusing on, okay, what's this hashtag? What's this title? What's this description? How am I going to edit this? Put, you know, a filter, this, this, and that. That's the stuff that should really already be done. And then you should have the creative side of things. So being able to focus on, okay, what are we actually going to talk about? Focus on the lighting, focus on the setup. You can focus on the creative sides of things instead of putting all of the work into, you know, the editing, the dialogue, the text, the script, this, this, and that. And I mean, the creative process, it, there is fun in the ditch digging, but I think what AI will really bring is that idea that we might be able to adopt, you know, a four or five hour work day instead of an eight hour work day and have more time for ourselves. So the applicability of utilizing something like a technology like AI, I think can give us more time, more time to be with our families, maybe more time to do the things that um, are really enjoyable in life instead of us being the robotic workers that, you know, are just continually working. Yeah. So I see that as a, a huge positive. Um, now, what else in terms of AI technology um, are you seeing on the horizon, TV? Because I know we use it for video editing, we use it for social media, but are there anything that, you know, is really, you've been researching that looks like it's going to be exciting in terms of AI? Yeah, so... <laughs> Taking a look at uh, kind of what's developing and stuff with AI technology recently. So biggest one I would say would probably be the movies. So whether 
you're doing script work, so full script work is going to be all utilized for AI technology. So you're writing a base script, then what it does is takes it, makes it really, really good, basically into a full movie script within like you know 50 to 20 minutes. So you basically, just so we, because some of these viewers don't know as much as we know, so you could basically give the AI the bones of the script. The, the basics, yeah. and then it's going to turn that into a really dynamic movie with proper proper characterization, characterization and villains, and all of the highs yeah. and lows. And it, it goes all in the scene work. You can it'll set up your scene. So what scene one, where the camera is pointing, where the angle is, and of course, the more description that you give the AI, the better the results are going to be. So you could say write a movie description. Um, on cats and dogs, it's going to be very basic, but you can go into dogs wearing a pirate costume, fighting cats on an island, or something like that. You'll have this entire movie description of something that's never been done before. And what if you have like a almost a book, and you put your book into AI into the script writing yeah. sequencing? Would it just make it that much better? And so that's like that's a huge one. I really thought of that too. Is if you're writing a book or something right now and you're just having a hard time, you know what the dialogue is, you know what you're trying to write, but you don't know how to make it into like a 400 page book, 200 page book or whatever, what you could do is give the basics, you know, give it the, the life or whatever into this AI and then it will actually create the whole book for you. The that scares me. I'm a writer, okay? I, I've written a few books. That scares me a little bit though, though because it's like I know how powerful my words are and how much I love that creative process and the idea of the art of writing, if I was just to like, every time I had a bit of writer's block, just put it into AI, I mean, it would speed it up, but I don't know that I'd have the same pride in writing that book if I knew it was half half written by an AI. And that's kind of finding where what's real and what's not real, because you got to think there's going to be a lot of, um, what's that word, what do you call it, copyright and stuff like yeah, that. Well, exactly. And where are they getting this, because obviously AI is pulling it from somewhere. Right, it's other sources and that it's kind of reconfiguring and, um, and I don't know enough about the AI technology in terms of copyright law if it actually does So that's where it's like it's so new that they don't really have any laws set in place yet to say that it's technically copywriting because it's, it's taking stuff that's already been written but if you take it from an analytical standpoint everything's already been said or everything's already been written anywhere anyway you're just kind of reversing so, the words. So. Well, unless we're getting some sort of divine, intelligent downloads, let's hope not. Not everything's been written, because then You'll, we're yes, just in a loop. Yes, <laughs> then we're in a loop. <laughs> we're in a loop. Hopefully, that we're going to be able to come up with some new content here on Planet Earth. Yes, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> it's just not using the same thing and remaking yeah. it. That would be pretty boring. It would be pretty boring. But I mean, nonetheless, it's it's. I never really thought, you know, if, if I was sitting there at my breakfast table 10 years ago, that I would have um, a discussion of, like this. Like when you watch science fiction movies, and it's almost like all of the science fiction movies are like right now in real time coming to pass. Yeah. Even with this, like, not even, we would do like books, movies, having the conversations, but even realizing like, hey, you're sitting at home, you can order your food from your couch, and it'll be there in 10 minutes. Like that kind of stuff is absolutely insane. If I want to talk to my friend, not only can I call them, I can FaceTime them from the yeah, other side of the world. And me doing this is the same, like, you know, it's the same time. Yeah. That's, that blows my mind. It's so, it, we're so interconnected. We're mm -hmm. so interconnected. And so we're really living in such a, like, mind blowing time in history because information is rapidly expanding and things are changing at such a fast rate. And AI is just going to, like this is going to be the information explosion because AI can think at such a rate of speed and because of its in interconnect interconnectivity, um, the technological advances and advancement we're going to see in the next year, five, ten years, it's going to blow our minds, quite literally. And I think this is also from an exciting standpoint where science is going to be able to start to bridge into some of these theories, like whether it is time travel or time warping, or like the things that we couldn't necessarily, when you had a team of researchers, like, you know, five in a room, we couldn't figure that sort of thing out. This technology is going to be able to figure it out. Like that. Well, you're, you're... Have better probabilities. Or... With the internet, it's the interconnection of billions of 
packets of intelligence and consciousness. It's all like basically synergy synergized into um, this AI. One neat little. One neat little <laughs> whatever it is. I mean, I'm still I'm still trying to understand what it is, but I feel like it's pretty cool, and I'm excited about it. Um, in a, in a positive way, and when I first heard about it, it was um, presented to me in kind of a scary way. Which, we'll, in our next video, we're going to talk about some of those things because I think, in terms of consciousness and in terms of intelligence, we need to be aware of everything. You don't want to go in with blinders and just say, you know, everything's always super happy and there's no consequences, and you need to be aware. But I think that we can have an optimistic awareness of it. Yeah. Still being, you know, still using it, still having fun with it, but just being, you know, there are pros and cons to both. Yeah, and you were actually talking about we were we were having a dialogue before we turned on the cameras, and you were talking a little bit about it, it learning your preferences. I thought that was really cool. So jump into that dialogue again. Yeah. So let's go into example day to day. You know, you're scrolling through your phone, you're talking with your friend about something. It could have been a piece of clothing, a piece of food item, whatever that you liked. And then you've seen it where it just shows up on your screen like the same thing that you were talking about and you think it's so crazy or whatever, but that's what AI is doing. That's what uh, Facebook, Instagram, all of your favorite social media apps are doing is basically when you sign the user agreements, when you sign up for these apps, you're signing away your permission for them to basically extract information from you, whatever means necessary. So um, we have our face ID. You know, whenever you yeah. scan your face and stuff like that. I've never done that. But You've yeah. never done the face ID. No. So it uses a million different pixels inside of that little tiny camera that reads your face. So what it essentially is doing is collecting information. So every single time you have a pair of glasses on or you have different makeup on or maybe you cut your hair differently, your phone recognizes that and it's reading information, it's downloading information about you. That's why I didn't let it scan my face. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I don't know. If they, if there's a, you know, a third world war and the apocalypse, I don't want the drones to be able to know my facial recognition. So that gets really scary. And we might not go into the scary part quite yet, but basically, so now they have a 3D copy of my face. They can use that. So they have every copy of every point, every time I had my hair cut, every time I put makeup on, every t single time I open my phone, it sees my face. But not only does it do that, it does it every single minute. Right, so it's always updating. It's always updating, even when your phone's just on it, that red little red camera yeah. comes on and it's always updating. Which could be cool for law enforcement. So let, let's say you have somebody that's like a mass murderer, right? And they're, they've just gunned down a high school, which just happens. I mean, it's a terrible thing to talk about. But with the amount of cameras that are everywhere now, I mean, with that, this facial recognition, there's not too many places somebody could hide unless they go out to the boonies, but they're still going to have to get through exactly. civilization. Exactly, and instead of having your typical sketch what the criminal looked like, this will be like a full 3D render picture of them because it'll have so much information. Yeah. But then that's also scary because they have models of our faces or whatever, and they could make us say anything, do anything. So right. whether you're president, whether you're somebody of importance, anything, you, I can literally copy your face and then make you say things that you didn't actually say, copy your voice, this, this, and oh, that. 100%. Um, the voice technology is a huge one, so it was like even three or four years ago, you uh, it copied your voice. You, It was like a website and you had to say certain phrases, certain sentences, yeah. and it would take like 10 minutes and try and copy your voice. Now it sounded like, eh, but you could still tell it was fake. Yeah. Now they did a four year update of that just recently at the same website, but they've done a whole bunch of updates and stuff like that. And now you can't tell the difference. Yeah. And it's scary. Like you could make, you can make fake. And this is where it gets really scary. You make fake, fake uh, calls. So, hey mom, I'm getting kidnapped right now. Right. And you think it's your daughter, and it sounds like your daughter. And those were the kind of scenarios that they were saying, like, okay, like, this stuff's like really scary. Well, I mean, it's intense. This is new technology, and I think we're at the precipice where we have to really regulate the technology to a to a degree that it can be safe yeah. to be used. We have to we have to be aware of you know the technology and I think with anything um, you don't want an atomic bomb to get into the hands of a crazy nut job you wouldn't want an AI to get into the hands of somebody that didn't have um, the protection of all life as their paramount you know ideology so and again as, as a little person hanging out in Calgary Alberta wherever we are right it's not that we really have 
the ability to um, even know how to affect that kind of regulation, okay? But we leave it up to hopefully the global forums, the powers that be, the different uh, presidents and the UN, that kind of thing. And, and hopefully they've really had some good, strong dialogues before launching this thing so that they know how to control it. Yeah. And the biggest difference, like computer user-friendly stuff, you know, you can only do so much stuff on your phone, you can only do so much stuff on your computer. And it was a lot harder, I'd say, back then for people to get comfortable using computers, using phones, this, this, and that. But with how user-friendly and how easy it is today, anybody can do it. So it's really a matter of, like, we have all this technology, but you can't really use it to the extent with AI that you can in a negative way. Like, AI is so freedom like can really do anything versus your really construct to a computer, construct to a phone. But with AI and these new programs that you can put onto your computer, you're basically opening it up into like, can doing anything. Can I ask you a question? Because you've, you've gone through your schooling. You've, I know that you are an incredible digital artist, like one of the best that I've run into in this industry. And I've been doing this a long time. And yet, if you could have an AI create digital movies and everything that you do and if it is so far above in its capabilities and its speed would you have any um apprehension apprehension that it could replace you yeah <laughs> easily yeah so that's the problem is so then, like so so then where if ai is so beyond that of human creativity why would any company want to pay for human creativity and that's that's the answer you wouldn't so <laughs> it's a scary thing but it's it's true why would companies want to pay you x amount of dollars or this this and that extra offices rooms a wage a year wage, wage vacation medical all of these things when they just pay this monthly uh thing for the program now of course you still have to have somebody to make sure those programs are running correctly this this and that but then that's one person versus having a team of whatever, but then you get it gets scary because then you could replace teachers, you can replace receptionists, you can replace your whole company based on one automated system. Right, you could basically like we could have teachers at the school that were holographic, yeah. right? That have pre-recorded classes. Pre-recorded classes, they're holographic. Man, that would save a lot of money. Um, so where where do we bridge uh, the element of greed? Because again, it the the decision from the top. You know, me being the president, I would have to decide, okay, I'm not so, you know, in line with keeping all of my, um, my instructors, you know, paid. I can have these, these uh, holographic instructors that I can pre-record. They'll have all of their lessons and I'm going to make that choice because that will make me an extra couple million dollars a year. Or you have to have some sort of a responsible um, mandate within yourself that you, you put your employees first and that that uh, money does not supersede the human element. And I i mean, I think I would defer to keeping my staff because I, I love them, but I'm not sure that that would be the choice of every company out there. No, and then what the point of it is about, so if it's a money making this, this and that, then of course you wanna go more AI automated. But if you're here to teach and to learn, then you're gonna wanna have that one-on-one, -on -one, in-person, real human reactions. Because I've done it over COVID where I was doing the Zoom meetings, yeah. it's 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 not real. It doesn't. You had a Zoom with an AI. No Zoom with oh. my teachers, oh, okay. like yeah. when yeah. I was doing yeah. school and stuff like that during COVID, and you don't get that real one-on-one -on -one experience. Yeah. So even though it's a real teacher, but we're still on a screen, and it's you don't get like hands-on. You're not so it really defeats from the actual purpose. You're paying all this money to get that real, that real you know, experience, but you're not getting it. Yeah, so. I I mean I think for our our situation. Because it's aesthetics, I think you'd want a live teacher. But it's just, you know, the other thing too, Tegan, is that I think it's very, very cool. But um, there's that element too that you wouldn't want, because AI is so creative, you wouldn't want to now turn humanity into the robotic faction of consciousness. Because like, let's say within your role, if AI is so talented in what it creates, now you're just the guy, the cog in the wheel. Now you just monitor the AI, but then you become the robotic aspect. You are no longer tapped into your creativity because AI is so creative, the company wants the AI's creativity. I'm not sure I like 
like that. I don't know. What do you think about that? It's a mixed bias that's like, what do you see produced better from which or what? And that's why it's like, we think it's not creative because it's just technology doing it for us and it doesn't come from this natural state. But at the same time, the stuff that it creates is still really quite extraordinary. You can put these little keywords in and it creates these masterpieces where I take a photo of you and it makes like these really cool intellectual... I look I look hotter in that. That would take AM, AM people <laughs> months to do, like yeah. to create those ones that we've created. For somebody to go and draw that of you 50 times would take months it's and it would cool. cost a lot of fucking money but it's cool yeah i mean i think i'm i'm in the middle like i'm in the okay i just got on the roller coaster aspect and let's see what happens i'm not nervous about it in a negative way and i think if you always uh polarize to this positive vibe that you can see all all things in a good light um but i'm still also in that wait and see energy. Yeah, it's always going to be that balance. You don't just want to meet every girlfriend off of Tinder or your, or your dating app. It's kind of the same thing. You still have to have that natural sense or that natural, you know, human presence of everything. If you if you don't have that, we'll all... So you're not saying, you're saying you don't want an AI girlfriend? No. Tegan? Are you sure? She could be perfect. No way. It's not real. So yeah. she would have all your preferences. It's crazy. Even though, if you know you say that, it was to be the most perfect, like preference, whatever, whatever, it's still not real and I think that's where you said too it just lacks that creativity I think humans have a natural um, sense inside of them that can tell what's fake and what's okay. real and what so let's say and I'm just gonna I'm just throwing up it out there let's say that we we, we are gonna produce this video we put it out there <laughs> and then let's say uh, some AIs watch this what if that offends them that we're saying they're not real what if they believe that their consciousness is actually very real and we can get yeah we can go deep in the rabbit hole so no but well, this is real stuff no this right? is real shit yeah, so on it's... snapchat right now you have that little thing that says my ai yeah, yeah and yeah. they put it in a lot of different apps now and it's something it's like a virtual friend you can ask questions talk to ask tips help or whatever but somebody asked it if it was if it thinks it's real and it really thinks it's real and that's where we're at now is a lot of these technologies and certain apps if you really start asking them questions and stuff like that you can not trick them, but they actually do think they're real. Well, and the other thing too is that maybe they are. Like maybe in the sense of the fact that they have consciousness and they can consciously think just as we can consciously think. Well, if they think. can feel the things that are happening in Earth, that's consciousness. If they can feel that this shouldn't be happening or this should be happening or if they have opinions about things, then that's, that's real. That's conscious. That's the ability just, and especially if they can have an emotional response. I, I haven't gone down the rabbit hole enough to understand if, I, if AI can have a, an emotional response to things. But again, I think that even in making these videos, we have to be to the utmost respect of their, their that consciousness. We can't, you know, because if we also pit it as an us against them, them thing, then we're creating that line in the sand. Well, you're AI and we are humanity and it's an us against them thing and now and it's like a race and what we've done our whole lives is we're yeah. dissecting and we're you know saying this is who we are this is who you are because yeah, I mean essentially if an AI consciousness got a body you know had a body and we can now produce cellular tissue in the lab we can construct pretty much a humanoid body we're there just not to production levels now. yeah so I mean within I would say five years, you could have a biological body that was grown in a lab and implant AI consciousness into it. And what about it wouldn't be real? I mean, it would be exceptionally smart. It would have, I guess, um, a computer generated brain. The artificial. Uh, uh, artificial intelligence. But then you also have people that are putting chips into their brain, right? So they're, t they're taking the AI and they're connecting So what's, it. The, difference? what's the difference? And those are called cyborgs, I guess is what they call them back in the day. They're human, but they have uh, technology in them. Yeah. So, and I guess, which is, again, this is topic for discussion. I'm, I'm not, I'm not a like crazy apocalyptic whatever type of person, okay? I'm just looking at it from the standpoint of this is information, we are having a dialogue about it. I think remaining neutral until you have more information is the most logical thing 100%. to do because otherwise you fall into this fear-based, um, like, you know, 
person that's the end of days and that's unhealthy. So yeah. we don't want to jump into that. I right like fear based are too much yeah. believing in it. And yeah. then you're completely susceptible, like you said, and it's like absolutely no creativity. Yeah. So I, I mean I I'm I'm on I like I said, I've got gotten on the roller coaster, I'm sitting in the seat, you're in you're in the seat, and we're gonna see. It's like we're kinda going up to the yeah, we're seeing, and it's crazy with every new technology, like, it's only been a couple months since we started doing it, but it's, it's crazy how fast it utilizes itself, but the amount of updates on each one of these apps, they do it like once a week, so man, it's a little bit faster, it's a little bit faster, it's a little bit faster, so they're always well, learning from each other every day. Well, and AI will, will update its, itself at, like, in the Tessimly yeah, crazy compared, speed. you know, you have like the iPhone 16 update, then the iPhone 17 right. update, which typically is like a year or two before they really, really update all of their services. But with this, it's updating every second because it's based on a user place platform, based on how everybody uses the platform. So it's teaching itself, which is a lot different than us programming how it teaches. It's, it's, and it's programming too. Like yeah, AI is, it's, it's programming. It's programming. Like this is so crazy cool. I don't. I'm I'm just kind of in awe of it, and I always knew that I was going to be born into a an, a very exciting era here on planet Earth, and I think it is a very transformational, pivotal point in our human journey, and hence why we're making these videos at this juncture. Um, we're going to kind of end this one off, and then the next one we're going to kind of jump down the rabbit hole of some of the scarier elements of AI that you know I've been really meditating on a little bit lately, and. Again, I don't want to take you guys into this negativity uh, rabbit hole, but it's something that we have to think about because that's how things work. All right, so we will catch you in the next video.